check, 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 check. <clears throat> check one, two, check one, two. This is Derek Bros. I'm trying to get my glove on. Let me know if you can hear me okay. It is snowing in here. Check one, two, check one, two. This is Derek Bros. of Conscious Resistance Network. I'm here at Standing Rock at the Ocheti Sakawan Camp. Sakawin Camp. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Lots of honking going on. Oh shit, there's a car sliding. Oh. There are cars sliding down the hill now. Uh, let me know if you guys can hear me okay. I know it's just a few of you right now, but I'm going to try to do this quickly because it's snowing pretty heavily on me. And uh, I'm going to have to walk back to the Sacred Stone Camp pretty soon because I don't want to get stuck over here. But I really need to do this report with you guys because yesterday, the decision last night from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers came down. Uh, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Let me know you can hear me okay before we get into this. I want to make sure I'm not wasting your time or my time. Uh, I got 11 of you in there. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Let me know you can hear me. And also, before we get started, please go ahead and share this everywhere you can. Share this on your pages, your timelines, your groups, with your friends. And let us know where you're checking in from. Thank you, Kimberly from Florida, everyone else who's listening. This is Derek Bros once again with the Conscious Resistance Network. I've been out here reporting for Mint Press News and Collective Evolution and my own website since uh, last Tuesday. And... I'm going to be here at least a couple more days, not really sure. Today is the day we were all waiting for, December 5th, the day that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers said they were going to vacate people from this land, and the day that uh, the governor of North Dakota said, you know, they would stop cutting, start cutting off supplies from people. Obviously, that is not the, the, uh, the course that things have taken. Last night, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers saying that they are going to issue an environmental impact study and deny the permit for the final easement under the lake near here, which has been the site of controversy. And basically what that means is there will now be an environmental impact study. Whoa, try not to slip. Which means that the public will have uh, an opportunity to speak and to comment on this project. Um, now people are asking, is this really a victory or is this trickery? What does this mean in the long run? Well, what this means is that uh, Energy Transfer Partners has maybe possibly been you know, slowed down. But at the end of the day, what, what really matters is, do they really care about this uh, statement from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers land? More than likely not. The Energy Transfer Partners released a statement via their website last night or this morning saying that the decision from the administration does not affect us in any way, that they still plan to continue forward with their project. So what is at stake here is the following. They, whoop, almost fell. They face a fine for continuing the construction if they do it illegally. But at the end of the day, they may decide the fine is low enough that they are worth, that it's worth doing because they're gonna make more money in the long run. Many of you have heard of the, the deals that energy transfer partners have with their investors, which say that the project has to be completed, oil must be flowing by January 1st, or they're gonna face uh, business penalties. So they may decide they'd rather not face business penalties and they'd rather go ahead and face the fine, whatever it may be. Now, so this decision may slow them down. There are some people who are claiming they heard drilling happening last night, that the drilling is still taking place. So could it still happen here? Yes, it could still happen here if ultimately the company decides they're going to do it anyways and face the fine. What's up, brother? And uh, face the fine rather than slow down and stop the project. So they may decide we're okay with the fine. We're going to do it illegally, and we'll take that. Now, also the fact that it's pushed to January 1st means that it could, the decision could remain in the hands of a Trump administration. Donald Trump could come into office. As many of you know, he's invested partly in energy transfer partners. And so he could decide that he is going to staff the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and various agencies with people who are friendly to energy transfer partners. And that will make the environmental impact study friendly towards their cause, ultimately saying it's okay, there's nothing in that area that's going to cause harm. What I've been asking though over the last 20, you know, 12 hours that everybody's been celebrating here is, is the momentum that has been happening the past three or four months fighting against the Dakota Access Pipeline, is that going to subside now that uh, it's, not, it's supposedly not going to affect the Sioux? Was this issue for you listening and watching it? Was this just about defending indigenous communities or was this about stopping the project completely? 
For some people, they're saying no to this black snake no matter where it goes. So wherever it's rerouted, whatever communities it's going to affect, whatever land it's going to affect, whether it affects sacred sites or native sites, they're going to oppose it and they're going to fight it. Is that you? Are you in that group? Or was this strictly about fighting against indigenous um, attacks and, and on, on our communities, our indigenous communities, uh, resisting that? Was it just about that? I think that all depends on each of us as individuals. Personally, I think the project is bad in the long term no matter what, and it's part of the problem that we have this oligarchy, that we have the state and corporate collusion that, collusion that creates a monopoly, an oil monopoly, an oligarchy, oligarchy that allows them to suppress other alternatives like hemp and uh, many other hydrogen powered, other fuels that people have put out there that for some reason don't quite seem to make it in the mainstream. And it's because the state and the corporations work together to suppress these alternatives. So in the long run, this pipeline is only going to you know, keep that going. Whether or not it's stopped here and rerouted elsewhere, or even if this Dakota Access Pipeline is stopped, there's still other people fighting pipelines in, in uh, Florida and many other places. But at the end of the day, what I've been trying to stress is if we continue to use petroleum products and fossil fuel products, like this jacket somebody pointed out in another video. Oh, your jacket's made of petroleum products. It probably is, and that's kind of part of the problem. We don't have a lot of options because of this monopoly that has been maintained. There's, it's not very easy to avoid the oil companies and their products, but that doesn't mean we need to continue to support them. We need to break that monopoly, break that addiction to oil, and that addiction is maintained by the state and by the corporations who collude together. This collusion keeps the average person like you and I out of access to alternatives and so we have to go to the the gas stations to use to get here to fight against their products we have to you know use certain products that are made from the oil that we're trying to fight against and it's it sucks it's not a good decision it's not a, a good feeling to know that we're working against ourselves in some ways which is why we have to change our behavior at the end of the day all of our actions all our donations all our fighting all of our resistance getting tased pepper sprayed everything we do is all hollow change our individual actions. My goal here is to build empowered individuals so we can build empowered communities. Those of you who are listening, this is Derek Bros with the Conscious Resistance Network. I want to stress one thing. Um, this is the Conscious Resistance Network. This is my page that I started and built and website. They're working with more individuals to get people past the need for the state, past corporate power so that we can have true anarchy of the mind, of the heart, and of the spirit. That's what I'm after. So when I'm reporting for Mint Press News and I'm reporting for Collective Evolution, those are reports that I'm paid to do and I'm out there you know, as an independent journalist, so I try to keep my opinion out of it as much as possible. But when you're listening to me here on The Conscious Resistance, you're going to hear exactly how I feel about this. And what I feel is that this is a spiritual attack on the people. This, uh, take, off, man. take it easy, brother. Yeah, hey, brother. say what's up to Max. This dude Howdy. has been holding it down the whole time. Trying to help out. And I'm actually using his phone right now. So Yeah, I'm done with that thing. Good Follow to the Max. Smartphone. You can check up his work on Wake Up News. He's been killing it the whole week. Thank you, brother. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bless. you too. See you soon. So this is a spiritual attack on the people out here as well. This is trying to bring us down to a level where we're forced to use products that we know work against us in the long run, that we know harm our species and harm the planet and it's time for us to get past that um, let me show you guys the snowstorm real quick so this is the Ochetti camp snow's coming down pretty heavy we just saw that car right there slide into slide down the hill into that other car that sucked and I'm camped at Sacred Stone on the other side of the river over there so in a minute I'm gonna start to head back before I get snowed in and I'm standing up here on Media Hill, Facebook Hill, which is where all the media is at, and gathered right here. Um, there's been prayers going on. There's been, you know, different actions supposedly planned for today. But what we're hearing is there's actually a huge storm headed this way. It's supposed to be getting down to negative 32 on Thursday. I should be here at least uh, through the weekend to continue to report every day and just show you what the feel is like in the camp. I don't really think everybody's going to leave. There are some people already exiting, exiting last night. But there was a mass, um, mass of people coming in over the weekend. So many people were probably here just for the weekend and just for the veterans. So it's to be expected that some of them are going to leave. But the hardcore people who've been here for months will remain here. And I made a Facebook post yesterday saying, what's going to happen, though, for the people who are here on the Ochetti camp? Because technically, according to the U.S. government, this is still U.S. Army Corps of Engineers land. So they don't want people here. They want people out of here. And one way or another, 
they're going to end up pushing people out. So my guess is that they're going to wait till the media tension dies down and things slow down and the camp shrinks and then maybe come ask the people to, to leave or be forced to be removed. So it's important to keep your eyes on the situation regardless of what the government says. I, don't, I personally don't trust the government. Uh, I don't know if, you know, this is just something they're trying to placate us and slow us down and maybe get us to give up right now. But it's important to keep pushing, to stay strong. And I would also say that don't give Obama credit for this decision. I've seen people already saying, thank you, Obama, for saving the planet. No, Obama didn't do this. If Obama really cared or any of these politicians really cared, they would have been here in August. They would have been here in April. They would have stood strong immediately. They wouldn't need to be pushed by the people and for people to get tased and pepper sprayed. Where's Obama commenting on that? Did you hear him commenting when I got pepper sprayed or when I got tased, when anybody else got rubber bullets or water cannons? No, they didn't say anything. So don't give them the credit where it's not due. The credit is due to every single person right here on both sides of this river and every single person listening to these broadcasts and every single person sending donations and every single one of you saying prayers. That's what's most important as well, saying prayers, smoking the chinupa, sending up love to the Creator, Mini Wachoni Wakan, fighting for the sacred of water of life. These are all the people who deserve credit. So while we have may have won a temporary small victory and the credit is due where it is with the people, the fight is not over, the war is not over, and I hope, I hope and I pray that the fight against the Dakota Access Pipeline has inspired our people, not only indigenous people, but all the people of all the colors of all the nations in the world to come together and to start fighting against police militarization, stop fighting, start fighting against the police state at large, start fighting against the attack on the planet and all life on this planet, and to start fighting against unsustainable practices, extractive processes like fossil fuels and oils, because there are other alternatives and there's a way to do this without empowering the government. I am an anarchist. I am a spiritual anarchist. I'm not coming to you asking you to lobby the government to sign petitions or to write them and ask them for any help because I don't believe that that's the way we're going to uh, achieve things. Change comes from within. It starts with each and every one of us deciding that we want a different world, we want a better world, and then from that thought process, we speak it out loud, we write it, we, we talk to it with our brothers and sisters, and then we take action from there. So your thoughts, your words, and your actions become your destiny. So the sooner those things align and are aligned with what the planet needs and what all life needs, that's the moment we're going to see things change. I, uh, I really appreciate all of the support from around the world, overwhelmed with messages once again. This is my third time being here. And Standing Rock and it's a beautiful experience all around despite any violence or negativity coming from the authorities. This is a beautiful place to be and a beautiful experience that I will hold in my heart forever. And I'm going to be here for a few more days. So please stay tuned to my page, facebook.com slash Derek Bros. And you'll see me posting my reports for Mint Press News, for the Collective Evolution page, and for the Conscious Resistance Network. You can subscribe to all those channels and you'll see my upcoming reports. I've got videos coming out. I've got photos coming out. There should be an article on mintpressnews.com today as well. And lots more coverage coming your way. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the snowstorm, guys, and start heading back to Sacred Stone. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Your words matter. Your actions matter. You are not alone. Never let anybody put that doubt in your mind and make you think that you're alone, that you don't matter. I appreciate what you're doing. Remember... You are powerful, you are beautiful, you are free. Peace.